Lovers quarrel. It's a long sustained quarrel. What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. It's your guy, TJ, Mr. New Cool. And it's your girl, Danny, your horrendously hot hyena. Because it's hot as balls. Outside, inside, everywhere. And then I actually picked a hyena since we just... You know, Same like, Lion King. Exactly. I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was coming, so... It was it was the best. It was the best live live, live action, action so remake thus far. Besides Beyonce. Oh my don't hate us. When she, not, when she was singing the song though, I felt it. Let's not do that. But when she started talking, it's like, oh my God. The, so the problem with Beyonce as a voice actor, or maybe even an actress in general, is that she I feel like she's so recognizable and her voice is so distinct that it's impossible for most of us to like mm-hmm. separate the art, the artist from like her That's character. Fair. Like mm-hmm. I just like you hear her and you just hear, you hear Beyonce. So it's like it's hard to like you're not like I'm I'm listening to Beyonce coming through a lion's mouth, not I'm listening to Nala. Right. So that's fair. My thing with that is I'm glad she didn't have like a whole long like scenes like she you know Nala was only in the movie for like exactly so, adult Nala yeah so yeah. so it was perfect. To give Beyonce that, you know, so. But you're not going to shave. She made a lot of money off of that. Oh, definitely. Oh, of and, course. And then, she, and then she dropped a surprise album inspired by it. Which is very good. The album's really good. I heard parts of it this weekend. It was really dope. The, the Brown Skin Girl. Yes. I was singing I like that record. Yeah. And, you know, and like, as someone who is not brown skin, like, I can still, like, I still very much, like, appreciate the song mm-hmm. and what it stands for. And then, um... Uh, Find Your Way Back definitely made me cry because it was about, you know, your dad. Like, you know, she was singing about her dad and Circle of Life and stuff. So, like, it caught me off guard. I was driving and then it came on and I was like, well, damn, Beyonce. Like, you really just, (laughs) like, you're just going to, like, get me in the feels like that, you know. So, um, but, like, like top to bottom, like it was a solid body of work. It was, mm-hmm. and especially. I gotta like, listen to the, to it in full. It is. It's really good. And then back to the to the movie because Aladdin was trash. I didn't see either one yet. Don't so. see Aladdin. <sighs> I, mean, I have to see it. Yeah. You don't. You can wait and you can wait for like when it. Comes. Oh no! I was. Uh, I mean, I got you. <laughs> yeah. So it, it, Lion King was definitely the better of the two. I'll give you that. Mm-hmm. Even though, like, and I mean, they're they're going to make bank every time they come out because. Right. All young people are going to go, like, children are going to go see it. And then all of us are going to go see it because it's everything that we grew up with. everyone, though. That's kind of like Marvel. Much I am, like, man. Marvel's never, they're never going to stop making superhero movies because kids are never going to stop liking superheroes. Exactly. Yeah. So, Comic yeah. books have tested the time. My yeah. thing with the remakes is that, uh, how, what's going to be the, what's next? Like, if they do Lion King again in 20 years or so, they're going to have to use a real talking lion. Or it's just, <laughs> oh, what else yeah. are they going to do, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea, but I just Maybe know. Maybe they use puppets. Well, that's that's like the play. I mean, that's what they did for the play. I'm just saying. But but all saying that all to say that's why I am a horrendously hot hyena because that's, that's Lord knows, and it's like New York summers are just some, there's something else. I mm-hmm. love New York summers, but I hate New York summers because it's I love that like the city's always kind of like awake mm-hmm. and like there's always like. It's just like a buzz, like that kind of moves like twenty four hours a day in the summertime, but also it's hot as hell and it's like a it's it's humid, yeah. you know, and there's always like niggas who want to ruin it for everybody else. Uh, I, yeah, so that's the only the only downside sometimes. Mm-hmm. But but anyway, welcome to another episode of Love Is Coral. Yeah. So <laughs> this is your first time listening. Welcome. If this is your uh, second time listening to TJ would say welcome back and this is third or more you know you with us now yeah, so you, you, you love her. exactly you in it for the long haul um, and you've already heard that we've got uh, a special guest with us you know that we'll formally introduce this young man uh, a little later in the episode but we're excited mm-hmm. to have him yeah. and um, but how are you doing I'm, I'm doing well sir? love how are you I, I'm doing really well too, y'all. Let me Your tell hair you, is popping. That you know, I'm yeah, trying. The curls is popping. I miss curl. It's a curl fest. I didn't realize that was going on yesterday. I didn't know it was a thing, but I knew it was a thing. I didn't realize it was yesterday. My sister and I have already agreed to go next year. Okay. So I'm a I'm gonna do that. But y'all I, y'all gotta see TJ. I gotta take a picture of him and put him on the Instagram page. No, you don't. <laughs> he is getting slim and trim. This this I'm telling you, and his beard is just. <laughs> Filling in, it's just. I appreciate it, Danny. I appreciate all you the pop it. It's a, it's a, a hot boy summer. Nah, I don't want any of that. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just a regular guy. You flourishing. No, nah, I'm just a regular guy. You smart. 
Keep you loyal. Going. Uh-huh. What else? Your beard is connected. All of that. <laughs> I appreciate you, love. You're cute. You're cute. I need, I need your number. Uh, but, yeah. So, no, everything's good. We just celebrated our anniversary. Yeah. 15 years. 15 years dating. So, at this point, like, next year's anniversary, we will, I think, isn't that? We will have literally, like, known each other or been together longer than we've not been together. Sheesh. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, because if we met when we were like 15, 16, I'm 32 now. So, like, once you get to 16 or more years, literally more of my life has been spent with you than not. So, what, what half of your life was better? The jury's out. <laughs> <laughs> the That's jury, fair, the jury is still out. Nah, nah. I changed your life. As did I. Sure. But I, like, really changed your life. Uh, goodbye. Let's move on. You know, made you better. The, yes, and I made you better as well. Yes. I, I didn't. First of all, I didn't say that you did make me better. I'm just saying I made you better. Like, I'm just talking about my accomplishments. That's it. I just wish I could see how I'm just staring at him. This like TJ likes to take credit for everything. So, you know, you think he like you didn't? You, you birthed me too. No. Right? Okay, just making sure. My mother did did that. Okay. I just helped raise you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know, I made you a better person. Mm-hmm. Got you, you know, your arguing skills a little bit better. <laughs> I helped you get your grades up. <laughs> you did. I ain't even going to lie. Thank you. You get a five on that one. Feel exactly. Because Lord knows. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you was a little dumb to dumb. Not just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were that just lazy. Funny. Yeah, that's you, true. you lazy as shit. So. Anyway. Let's go right ahead and jump on this elevator. I'm going to go up. Jump right in there. Okay. Going up. Yeah, you know, so as Danny said, we celebrated 15 years of dating each other. We've known each other, what, 16 years? Mm-hmm. We met in 03. Crazy. Wow. Um, so it's, Wild, it's, right? just, it's just crazy to know that, like you said, like, we've been together for so long and, you know, we've grown up with each other, so. Absolutely. Um, and it's a blessing, you know. Uh, we have our good times, we have our bad times, but that's life. But it's about how you bounce back from it, and you know we're, we're able to continue it. So I'm I'm happy about that. So that's that's what I have. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I think um, that's a great segue because I'm still also going to be going up. This is a little bit more um, about me than just about us because we already talked about the um, anniversary bit, but. F- By the time this episode drops, I will be days away from my surgery. Mm. So um, y'all already know now that TJ has been sharing with y'all that he had weight loss surgery and then I'm on deck. Mm. So August 6th is the big day. And... I'm um, I'm excited, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we we talked about it in the previous episodes, but like this is something that you know each of us is, is doing for ourselves, but then also for like us as a family, for our daughter, and you know making strides towards having a longer, healthier life. Right. And so, um, I'm you know I'm looking forward to it. Like, of course, I know I'm gonna get a little bit more like you know nerves a little mm-hmm. bit beforehand because it's surgery, so you know to be expected. Right. But I'm excited for it, and then also. Um, I made my last, what I've like to call my last big girl purchase. So TJ's brother is getting married and also in a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And I needed a dress for the wedding. Mm-hmm. But when I thought about it, I was like, damn, I was like, this might be the last time I have to buy any type of clothes at this size. So it's something small mm-hmm. and it may not, you know, register with a lot of people, especially like if you've never had to deal with like weight issues or anything like that. But like to know that like I may no longer ever in my life have to buy something at this size. Right. And that way, because I'm making this like massive life change right, right, right. to, you know, do better. So I thought that was kind of dope. That is dope. Yeah. yeah. Dress is cute as fuck though, but <laughs> it's just like, it won't be that size anymore. Right. So I'm excited, you know, I'm ready I'm for the, for, for the yeah. next, the next frontier. Welcome to the loser's bench, as they say. I actually hate that. You hate that saying? I hate that term. Oh, I thought loser it was kind of cute. I thought it was kind of cute. I mean, I understand it because you're losing weight. So I understand that. You just think it's corny? Just, no, it's not that it's corny. It's just like to call someone a loser. Like, But it's like it's a play like, on words. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, a, it's I, not I a that. negative connotation of the word loser. So it's not as yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. bad. I just think for, like every time I see it, I'm just like, uh, this is not. 
of benches. Like, I want to sit on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of benches uh, and losers and winners, um, you want to like, talk about that? I'm just saying, uh, we saw Reek this weekend. Listen, Reek was talking crazy. Y'all were all seen... talking crazy. No, no, no. no. Reek was huh. talking crazy. He was talking Every... positive about how he was going to, you know, at this flag football game, he was going to be ready. And then I had to reach out to him to be like, what's up? And then they changed it. And he had all these other excuses. But it's crazy because <sighs> Mouse went on Twitter like, where are these cowards at? Yeah, y'all, y'all gonna have to learn to understand Mouse. Do not engage with Mouse. That's what he's he's doing it purposely. Is it psychological? This yes, he's all doing it purposely. Mental. And as soon as you as soon as you bite the bait, he got you. This is the mental warfare before you. they even before get on the Before it court. even started, he got I you. I just at this point, I feel like this game needs to happen. Um, I feel like I should be able to sell tickets <laughs> because. The amount of shit talking that these grown ass men have been doing. But shit talking is part of it. Yeah. It it's is. Part of, it's it part is. of it. It's a competitive part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all. It's all comes together. It's like pieces to the puzzle. But I, I'm a. I am excited and ready to see. I just hope it actually happens because, you know, y'all are all busy people, so schedules yeah. need to align. You know, Mercury needs to not be in retrograde for this shit to not happen. I guess. But, uh, yeah, you know, just keep me posted. You put it out there. Huh? I mean, technically. I'm gonna say that they forfeited. So. Oh my gosh. Okay. Who when forfeited? Mo- How? Because <laughs> it was supposed to happen this weekend. It, it was. It was supposed oh, to happen. Okay. It was supposed to happen yesterday. And then Reek was like, "Oh, it's, it's all on Mouse." So you know what I mean? We're playing. We're playing the blame. But he game. was. He was hosting Curl Fest. Yeah, I mean, you, that's definitely more important. <laughs> yeah. So therefore, you know, everybody's so got something. So therefore, they lost. Oh my god! All right, Mo- moving right along. This is still like usually like a ninety-minute episode. <laughs> All we right, see, we got to see if, if our guest has if you want to go up or down. You, I am so uh, sorry. Is yeah. there anything that you want to chime in? Up, oh, I'm just I'm going up, definitely going up because uh, I'm in a good space right mm-hmm. now. I'm learning to embrace um, who I'm becoming. Some I had an interesting conversation with someone the other day, and they were telling me about that. Um, I'm doing a lot of the self work, the internal work mm. to grow, and I think that that is something that is so slept on with creatives. Mm-hmm. Like we try to rush to do the the groundwork as far as creating your brand or creating whatever you're trying to to make, but you don't really do the work on yourself, or you forget to do the work on yourself. And the the fact of the matter is, like the internal work you do has the external uh, outcome. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean. So if yeah. you're doing the work on yourself and it's really, really good work, and you're really uh, getting to know yourself and getting to know your strengths and weaknesses, everything that you touch outside of that is going to turn to gold. Absolutely. So I'm just I'm doing a lot of that work. I started waking up at you know doing the five a.m. club thing, waking mm-hmm. up at five in the morning to go, um, not just to go work out, but just using the first three hours of my day for me mm-hmm. and doing you know stuff for me. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm up. I'm meditating. I'm cleaning. I'm organizing my day um i'll go to the gym or if i work out in the crib or just prepping myself getting myself ready and it, it, my days have been significantly better and more productive probably. way more productive it's, it's so, so crazy it's so, it's so important. crazy how it works it's so important and like i think that it's something that like i don't always get to do uh-huh. because it's like a lot of times it's like get up you know get dressed get the baby mm-hmm. get, you know do that type of thing hit the ground running and then you know and being that you're also in the, like the education field, like right. you know, it's like when you like walk into the door, it's like as soon as like you're in, you know, a three mile radius of a child, like it's like it's they like call, you're on, yeah, you're on, you know. Yeah. But at the same time, like I know exactly what you mean about like that kind of just taking that time for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, also, major proponent, like I'm a major uh, proponent of therapy, right. like speaking to somebody, and so I like, and and not, and more importantly, what I'm realizing, which is why I am like making sure I get back into it of going is because you need to like go not just when like the, your world is like falling down around mm-hmm. your ears but when you're good too, you're to good too good feelings. Yep. because I was going like after my dad died mm-hmm. and stuff like that and then like now that I've kind of like turned the corner and like school's done and, and all that stuff I'm like alright you know I'm good like I'm, I'm I'm in a better space the weight lifted blah 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 yeah. grad school done but I'm like wait a minute let me stop playing and like take mm-hmm. myself back because it is so so important to do that internal work because then that way like your happiness is your own responsibility absolutely and then everybody else will just benefit therefore because mm-hmm. of it so absolutely so, def- yeah, that's why i'm going up that's an awesome that's way true. to end our elevator mm-hmm, yeah. 
Well, with that being said, we are now going to shift, pivot into our relationship tip of the week where I give you things that are meaningful and useful to your life and TJ tells you something that he found on Google. (laughs) That's crazy. I mean... These are the things. I mean, if you say so. So, are you going to go first? Nah, you, you, you just kind of jumped in the elevator, so... Well, I didn't jump. I was just saying, like... You ready? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because so, we know you just kept on talking and talking and talking. You don't have a lot to say. And talking. Am I going first? Yes, you can okay. go first. So, my relationship tip of the week um, is about remembering your why. Um you know, when you're in a relationship or any type of ship, like, you know, we talk about sometimes you need to remember why you got with somebody or why you're with it. And, and by doing and specifically doing that, but like sometimes it's OK to take a walk down memory lane. And so this one has I'm not you don't win because it's not a shout out to you. It's a shout out to Rome because he was the one who asked us on the ride home about what anniver- what songs do we like listen to for our anniversary? Mm-hmm. What are like those ones? So he was playing to um, to me is still he played our wedding song for us. And so, you know, those are just kind of like sometimes what you need, like especially when you're in a relationship for a longer period of time, those songs or movies or moments that, you know... Evoke a nostalgic feeling. Yeah, you get that nostalgia going. It's sometimes what you need because like 15 years later, like it's real easy to just kind of fall into the monotony and, Mm -hmm. you know, the day-to-day of being with each other. But I would say like me and TJ, at least I know, I thoroughly enjoyed his company last night. And so... It was, and part of that was because we took a little walk down memory lane with the songs and singing along and all that stuff like that, being silly and goofy together. Mm. I can agree with that. So, so then I win. Thank you. No, no. <laughs> How did you meet Room? T- no. So, by proxy. Because, because of Rock. Cause and effect. <laughs> so, by proxy. I met Room because of Rock. So, How th- did you meet Rock? <laughs> because of Twitter. <laughs> no, definitely not. You met Rod, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna concede this because you guys happen to go to the same high school together. That's fine. Because me and Rock are friends. We were friends in high school. Because y'all both like sneakers. That's why. No, I'm not gonna see. In high school, we didn't really even talk about sneakers. I'm we not. About other things. I am not but conceding anyway. that point. We can move on. Um, <laughs> to to kind of piggyback off of that, um, I'm gonna say for for my tip, um. Think about your partner. Um, originally, so we went to, uh, it's an event called Cups and Convos. Originally, I was going to go by myself. Mm-hmm. So I already purchased my ticket, speaking to my guys, like, yeah, we going. Mm-hmm. And then when I told Danny, she was like, oh, have fun. So I was like, was that like a have fun, have fun? <laughs> or was that like a have fun? Been but there. But she kind of wanted to go. So yeah. I was just like... You know, did, do you want to come out with us? And she was like, yeah. So I was like, you know, cop her a ticket as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think sometimes it's easy for us to just think about ourselves or think. Right. So sometimes you got to just remember, like, your, your significant other, your friends. You got to mm-hmm. think about them, like, maybe they want to come too. Right. Or, or, you know, so. Well, and also, I'm sorry. It, no, go ahead, go ahead. It's always ni- just nice to ask. Yeah. Just, you know, yeah. just to be like, you, you know, right. if you want to come, you could come. Right. But if you yeah. don't, it's cool too. You're but. right. And it wasn't a have fun like, oh, so you just not gonna ask me have fun. It was like, no, have fun. Like I, I fully support like I know your heart, time baby. with the guys, like yeah, all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, that's important. And and so I was like fully prepared to like be home, you know, mom mode, all that stuff like that. But when he invited me, like I do thoroughly enjoy my time, like when I like hanging out with TJ and Rock and mm-hmm. Rome and JB. And you know, I'm, even though I am the only girl, mm-hmm. you know, or woman, I should say, and but. I'd, I'd like to think that in a lot of ways I'm kind of like some ways I'm kind of like one of the guys like I don't infringe upon mm-hmm. like the the guys stuff to an extent I'd like to think I don't anyway um so that's why I was like okay sure like you know I I love the opportunity to kind of get out the house and stuff yeah. like that too so I'm appreciative that you asked but well, since I, you said to piggyback on my tip therefore I win based off based of, of your my logic friend, who you met through me <laughs> so I win Anyway, moving right along. That's crazy to me. What, uh, any, anything else? What, what, uh, sir? Yes. So what, our lovely guest. <laughs> yes, I'm here. Um, if you had to say who had a more meaningful, uh-huh. inspirational tip, I mean, you could be, be honest. Um, I honestly, 
I thought she smoked you at first, mm. but your tip, I think, as a man, was like super important because um, I go through the same thing with my girl. Like she, she wants to go everywhere. Like not to say that she wants to go everywhere with me, but mm. she loves to go places with me. Mm. And it's not even a matter of like she want to be on my back or this that. No, she just genuinely wants to be around me when I'm having fun with my friends and doing mm-hmm. shit with gotcha. my friends. Like she wants to see me. In that, um, you in know, in, in my element, right, right, right. She you. just wants to sit back and see that sometimes, and um, I forget that a lot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I'm always going here, going there, and I, I'm getting better with it. Where I'm like, you come on, come with me to this, I, or like I invite, I usually invite her to podcast and stuff. She has something to do today, but mm-hmm. it would be perfect for her to come today. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, relationship podcast, it would have been perfect. right? Yeah, but um, we would have, we would have had a fourth mic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we would have been lit. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, but I also think that um, we we. Oh, that's good. We've been together for uh four years, so mm-hmm. okay. um, keeping it, you know, the remembering why I think is very very important because mm-hmm. that's uh that's like the the ultimate question when you going through stuff. Yeah, yeah. like I'm why definitely. why are we going through this? Like why what's why is this worth it? Yes, yeah. yeah, definitely. So I I, I, I can't I really can't pick a side, but as <laughs> as a as a guy, I gotta lean with you because <sighs> I'm currently going through that. So the, and technically, you pick the side. So I mean, I win. I'm not gonna be rude to our guests. <laughs> <laughs> nah, all right, I, I, I'll allow it. He can get his. Nah, load. you got it. Love. He, he needs his W's when he can get. I mean, no, bro, we're not gonna do wow. that. I, I, I get a lot of W's. Is that a mercy killing? I, um, I get a lot of W's. I win a lot. Sure, baby. I win a lot. <laughs> what if you say? That's cool. Whatever helps you. Sleep at night. Exactly. Okay. That's Ugh. that's something that I say. So I mm. taught you that as well. Again, I'm just raising you. <laughs> Over and over again. But go ahead. Let's the, let's go ahead and segue into, you know what segue means, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, into the word of the week, which you had to add as a, was it a component of our show? Because I was killing you with vocabulary. I don't, I don't think you were killing me. I just, I wanted to, I just compete. wanted to. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to compete. So I don't think you were necessarily So you felt a little me. threatened? No, not at all. But. <laughs> You know, if you're not learning, then what are you doing? So, mm, so I teach you all the time. <laughs> anyway. All right. So enlighten us. What is our SAT word? My well, word of the week is inane. 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 Yeah. Good word. Okay. It means to be silly <laughs> or stupid. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that you're silly or stupid. I'm just, you know, saying what the definition is. I, I know. Oh, okay. Just had to make sure. Yeah. Are, are you going to spell it? Sure. I, I know you know it. I know. Yeah. I-N-A-N-E. Yeah. Inane. That's crazy that that, that, that is an SAT word. I mean, like, it is. People I don't know. use, people you say silly and stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, they don't no, say inane. I'm just saying, so like when I think of SAT words, typically I'm thinking like, they're going to be like long or like a lot hard of syllables. to pronounce. <laughs> and it's like when you see something short, but it's like, that's an SAT word. It's like, wow. Yeah. You felt like I was being inane the other day. That's why you. Yeah, she was being very silly the other day. He was hating. That's all. I wasn't hating. He was hating. I was. <laughs> First, you was being silly last night. What, what was I being? With the rotisserie chicken <laughs> gift. Oh, oh my god! I got to show you this when we finish recording. Okay. And I was probably and yes, it, it was a lot of TJ does know me so pretty well because he was like you're tired, but <laughs> you ever see something on the Twitter uh-huh. and it's like. Mildly funny because like you're tired or maybe a little it's drunk. It's way funnier than it should be. I, and then she like was I was, I was tackling I, like five minutes straight, and I'm like, it's funny, but it's not that funny. And then like nobody else around you is laughing nearly as hard as you, so then you start feeling some type of way because you're like, I was like, I'm embarrassed, but it's still so funny to me. And that, I mean, that's me all the time. I really like, I'm so easily entertained mm-hmm. that like the stupidest shit will make me laugh. But such is life. Well, thank you for that um, uh, vocabulary term. Appreciate it. You know, I'm, folks, I challenge you to use the word inane at least three times a week. Oh, uh, I'm going to call you inane all the time. <laughs> I can't wait. Anyway, it's so you can inane behavior. <laughs> incorporate that into your, change, your everyday I'm vocabulary. I'm going to change your name on my phone to inane. Goodbye, sir. Anyway. Big silly. <laughs> Listen, somebody got to be. You always you missed, you're grumpy. I'm, Find the next SAT word that means grumpy. Will do. That's and that's you. Okay. And we, I got to change my, my your name and my phone to that. Okay. All right. I'm getting homework. Yes. Okay. Yes. And you will fail if you don't um, turn it in. But now you've heard the voice. You've had heard him 
weigh in on our relationship tip and talk about his own elevator experiences about doing the work on the inside. Um, but now we need to put a name to the voice. Mm -hmm. And in front of us, we have Mr. Taki Bond, creator of What's the Move app. Thank you, Taki, for being on. Thank you for having me. Appreciate that. Yes. Um, so with any interview that we have, um, any interview guests that we have on here, uh, we start with a kind of like an icebreaker question. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a, a stumper, so take your time if you need to give yourself some think time. Okay. Um, what is the kindest or wisest thing someone has ever told you? So it can be family, significant other, friend, teacher, bum on the street. Um, hmm, that is a good question. So why, I'm gonna go with wisest. Okay. Mm. I'm gonna go with wisest, and this is it's easy. Um, Combat Jack, rest in peace, Reg. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I he is always like a mentor figure to me. Mm -hmm. um, just a really cool dude. Always, you know, he believed in in me. He always pushed me. Always gave me good advice. But one day he gave me, I think the best advice ever. Where he, I, I told him like I don't think I fit in with like this personality media podcasty scene mm. and he was like you don't fit in because you're onto something much bigger than this mm. like than this industry bs like you this is beneath you this is why you don't fit in mm -hmm. you're, you're trying to do something bigger and it wasn't until maybe like after he passed maybe like a yeah like after he passed i didn't really sit back and think about that because um where i was at the time i was trying to fit in mm -hmm. but you know, a year later where I no longer care about fitting in, I'm like, okay, I get what he's saying now. And even more so now, I get what he's saying because I'm doing something completely left field from that. Mm -hmm. And um, that is, like I said, it's important for you to know yourself. Definitely. It's important for you to know what it what your niche is because a lot of the times we're living other people's uh, dreams. We're trying to do what other people are doing because we see it work for them and we think, damn, I could do that too or that's going to work for me too, but mm -hmm. that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. powerful words and that's real true because I, I and I like listening to you say that also just even makes me think about us doing this because like you know you know you got somebody you could throw a rock and you hit somebody who has a podcast at mm -hmm. this point in any direction and you know even TJ and I don't necessarily like fit the mold of that like we're not like we we come to New York but we're not New York based mm -hmm. we aren't like always on the scene like we have like a fan you know what I mean like we've got yeah. these other things that are not common for people who are like pushing trying to push their brand forward and sometimes you know being in a room full of people who are in the same uh market mm -hmm. or you know can I, I know I don't know about TJ but I've definitely felt like an an outsider mm -hmm. like looking in sometimes because I'm like I am not in alignment with like, you know, like I'm not 24. Right. I'm not, you know, living in New York and hustling and in this like, you know, event planning or event throwing industry. I'm right. just like this teacher from Baltimore who loves to talk to her husband. You're from Baltimore? She's not asking. from Baltimore. She's you know asking. what I mean? Who lives in Baltimore, who's like trying to like trying to build something with her husband because mm -hmm. we feel like we we have like a, a, a niche here that we're working with, but it's just not like we don't look and sound and act. Like everybody else, so that's really really powerful stuff too. Mm -hmm. So I think that's dope. Well, just to, to touch on what you just said, if everything you described is someone who belongs in that type of room, <laughs> like every, every, that's what everybody's doing. Everybody is from wherever they're from. Mm -hmm. They on to something. They feel like they got something good, and then they say, "I'm gonna go be with it." Like the little man, I'm gonna, I want to be where the people are. Mm -hmm. I want to be where everybody else who's doing dope things like this is. And true, true. So you're right. definitely supposed to be in that room. True. But I think, I think. What, what Taki said about, you know, finding your lane, mm -hmm. finding what you're doing. Like, we're doing this, but we're not doing it with the idea that this is going to take us to right, the... Right. Be our bread and butter. To, right. to our next level. Right. Like, yeah. this this is really, and I always say it, like, this is, like, therapeutic for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a way for us to, like... This is this this can be a date night, honestly. Right. Like, it has you been. Know, wow, So, you know, I've always said to, like, people, like... I want to continue doing this as long as it's fun for me and Danny. Right. Like, I'm not doing it because I'm trying to get a million views or I'm trying to, like, I'm not chasing that. Right. It's a way for me and my wife to kind of converse. We can, you know, we had a bad argument. We talk it out. Mm -hmm. Other people listen to it. They give their feedback. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, 
or, or we're talking about something and, and I'm wrong, but I don't feel like I'm wrong at the time. <laughs> and then Rock hits me up like, yo, you were wrong. And <laughs> he hits Danny like, you should have slapped him. Like, you know, <laughs> stuff like that happens. But it, it, it's a way to kind of just have people kind of, you know, critique us. Right. Ki- kind of give us a different outlook on, on what we think. Again, mm-hmm. you know, everyone hear our story and they're like, oh, my God, it's so sweet. You've been together for 15 years and you've only been with each other. But they don't see they don't everything see the that we that go through. Into it, right? yeah. mm-hmm. They don't see the right. arguments. They don't see the days that we're not talking to each other right. because no one wants to concede. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They just see the happiness. So for me, that was important. Like I want people to see, like, yeah, me and Danny, we love each other. We go through things like everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is how we work. But just because it works for us, that it may not work for y'all. Yeah, you know what I mean? So... This is just our mm-hmm. perspective, but True. I think because I, I think because of that, at least for me, it's easier. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not chasing. I don't mind going to events. I don't mind speaking to people, but I'm not. I'm not doing it because I want to be famous. I'm not doing it because I'm trying to be a part mm-hmm. of this mold. I'm doing it because it's. And it's that fun. makes the work. That makes the work that much more beautiful because mm-hmm. it's like you're creating without constraint. Like you're creating without worrying about what mold it's gonna fit in or anything mm-hmm. like that. You're just doing it to create something that is, like you said, therapeutic for you and something that other people can connect with. Yeah, yeah. and that's being a creative. That's yeah. the beautiful part about it. Yeah, that's a very great way to like sum it all up. Good job, guys. <laughs> Good, excellent. Um, so what's the move, right? How did you create it? Like, what was the inspiration behind it? Um, I tell everybody all the time the inspiration was I just didn't want to go to City Island no more. <laughs> but I <laughs> I've mean, never been it, to City Island, FYI. I mean, depending on what, what restaurant you go to, you ain't missing much. But it's it's dope. I mean, if you like seafood, it's a great summer. She t- don't. Summer, oh, if you don't like I mean, seafood, it's, then it's, I, I eat some seafood. I don't, if I'm you not don't like, like seafood like that, then you're not missing anything. Okay. Um. So... Basically, at the time, I was managing artists, Mm -hmm. and that being a manager causes you to be in a bunch of different rooms, and Mm -hmm. you meet so many different people, and when you do that, you find out about events and parties and exclusive things, and oh, this person's having a release party, Mm -hmm. and you'll go to the release party, and Charlemagne and Angela Yee are there, something that actually happened to me. It's Mm -hmm. like, I was just in the right rooms because I was you know, aligning myself with the right types of people. And I couldn't understand how people... I'm from the Bronx. I'm from uptown in the Bronx. I couldn't understand how people who had the same kind of goals as me, they they all wanted to make millions of dollars off of music mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, whatever they're creating. But they didn't know about these type of events and they didn't know about these type of parties. And what I wanted to do was, you know, be that liaison and connect the dots for them. Um, so I created What's the Move as a newsletter. Mm-hmm. And it went out every Thursday, and it just let people know about parties, events, happy hours for that weekend. Mm-hmm. And people, you know, gravitated towards it. People liked it. They kept asking for different types of events, and can you add this, and, you know, stuff like that. And it started to grow over time. So then eventually we made it into a website. Uh, the website was really dope when it first came out because that was when we introduced the event calendar mm-hmm. to where um, now you can see events cover for the whole month or in in a months down the line or something like that and it was just a game changer for us but what i noticed was um at first the numbers were incredible but then they started to decline because it's like it's 2019 18 19 people aren't really going to websites yeah everybody's using apps on their mm-hmm. phones so i'm thinking all right cool i'm gonna use an app that i already have i'm gonna use twitter and instagram and facebook to promote events. So now we're at a point where we're posting events every single day. Mm -hmm. We're posting like, you know, 80 to 100 events every day. And that got extremely tedious. Mm -hmm. I can Um, only imagine. Yo, setting them shits up on Hootsuite is like... A job in itself. It's a job in itself. And it's so time consuming. So um, we got to a point, and when I say we, I mean myself and my my small team, senior editor, Mm -hmm. social media managers, uh, Four, or five, four writers, and we're just, you know, piecing everything together. So we got to the point where um, we had to build the app. We mm-hmm. had to build our own build our own platform, build everything to where people can come and check it out. And it's basically everything that we've done so far with the newsletter, the social media, and the website all in one central hub, one place. And the app came to be. 
We released it, had a release party at um the forty forty. I heard about and that. It was really, really it was just a good that, I think that was the best thing I've ever put my hand one of the best things I ever put my hands on. Mm-hmm. There was such so much love in that room. That's mm-hmm. dope. Such a good time. So that's amazing. It, thank you. And I'm I'm like I'm I'm like perusing the app right now. Okay. And it's really like, y'all, if you are in New York, like in New York City. Or if you plan on coming on. Or you plan on right coming right to New York yeah, and you yeah. are, That's and important. you know this is yeah, so yeah. and this is you know what? And you're absolutely right because I have like like we've been living in Baltimore now for what? Over ten years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so Since so six, yeah. Yeah. So you ne- like when people like my my friends and stuff will be like, Oh, Danny, I'm coming to New York. Like, you gotta tell me like where to go. Where to go. And I'll be like, bitch, I don't know. Like I, I'm like, I live down here with you. Like and so I'm like, and you know, and my thing is like my party and you know college and stuff like that that was all in, in the dmv so like okay. i don't really know like as an adult like mm-hmm. all the places to go and stuff like that like i only when we come up here it's more like somebody's having something so we're going to like right. a very spe- specific, specific targeted mm-hmm. event or something like that versus like you know like oh what are we going to do a saturday night in new york blah 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 but this app like i'm just already looking here and it's like it's got the event calendar you can hone in by date the happy hours, food broken mm-hmm. down by borough, date nights, and concerts and shows. Give you everything you need. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'm what I'm saying is now, <laughs> if anyone asks me about what to do in New York, I'm just going to direct you to the app <laughs> and then tell you I have fun. I get my, fr- my friends <laughs> tell me that a lot because um, that's something that New Yorkers just deal with. I- I'm noticing, like, people come to New York and think you know everything. everything. Yeah. I mean, I-, I get it. In my case, I get it. Mm-hmm. But people come and ask, uh, you know, people I know, yo, what's going? I'm coming out. What's going on? And, and it's like, yo, bro, I don't live You're this like, life that you think I live. Like, I'm, bro, I'm out every night. And <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to work in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> Why did you come on the weekday? Like, like I'm, it's Thursday, sir. Right. Like, I'm going. Where am I going? To my job. I'm going like, to work tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. It's like here now, but now you can see a happy hour. Mm-hmm. You can see all that, and like, I, you know, I'm really impressed. Like, I thank you. It's, I really appreciate that. It's so comprehensive that's the word i want to mm-hmm. use and like even just like the you know the visuals behind it like of who's performing and when and i think it's so important because people always want to come to new york and um and do so much but right. then, but then also too like people often sometimes get pigeon not pigeonhole get like stuck doing things that are like very touristy but yeah, don't don't, don't align with new like york their is. interests mm-hmm. and things like that and then people are like oh i have like you know like not the best view of like their experience but right. it's like if you went to something that you knew you would actually be into, into doing but now you're doing it in this in the setting of new york city you would be that much more happy you would you be that exactly much happier. what you wanted out of your exactly. experience in new york so I, you know it's crazy. I never even looked at it like that, but yeah, like it makes perfect sense. See, and so that's what I said. Like when you start talking to people who've been living outside of New York for like over two, three, four years, uh-huh. like it starts to be like I'm not in the loop about what this What's is going so on. So like I can right. use this my damn self when mm-hmm. I come up here if I'm like trying to do something with my girls. Like, I wish this was here. Like literally one like a few years ago, my line sisters did a, we did like a, a over a weekend trip to New York mm-hmm. for like our like. I guess our yeah our Delta Versary and they were like you know Danny you the New York line sister what and I was like bitch I don't know like <laughs> I was like I'm down here in college with y'all so all saying that all to say like this is really really good especially for like out of towners mm-hmm. um, I appreciate that no problem listen I'm trying to help you you know ah, thank you thank you <laughs> that's another angle for advertising right there absolutely um and so which kind of touched on the 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 next question which was like how does it stand out because it, so I'm gonna re- kind of re reframe that question is there anything else even like what's the move out there and if if so like any competitors yeah like how does it, it stand out i mean i know i have my opinions in just mm-hmm. two seconds but <laughs> how does it um there are plenty of other variations of what's the move or similar platforms and mm-hmm. it's like what's the move stands out um i don't know i think it's i think because I, I ask myself this question all the time. Because in business, you always want to know, like, to a degree, what your competitors are doing. Mm-hmm. I, well, I say you want to know what your competitors are doing so you can do what they're not doing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what is the thing that would make it stand out. And one thing, what's what I've noticed is one thing, what's the move has is we have a better connection with the people. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, there's another app platform just like it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I've been watching them for a while. I think their platform is really dope. But I can't help but notice not as many people are using their platform and it's not to say because it's bad mm-hmm. it's not to say because it, it doesn't work it's it's doing the same shit mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's just a matter of 
you haven't put this platform in front of the right people. Okay. Or you haven't had the right people talk about your platform to the point that now everybody wants to use this platform. It's kind of like Apple and Android. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Android, they do the same. Phones, they do the same shit. Yeah. Why do people like Apple more? Because someone told us Apple was cooler. Yes. And so it becomes like user friendly. It's you. It's more user friendly. It's 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 the, it's the go to. It's mm-hmm. the source that everybody's using. Yeah. Somebody tells you, oh, I need, I'm looking for something to do. They're going to say, go to What's the Move. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, it's what I aim to do. Mm-hmm. It was part of the original plan. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be the go-to source for parties and events in the city. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter. And I say, I say that, like, with anybody that's dealing with competition, mm-hmm. I, I don't really say you compete with anybody. Like, yeah. I mean, the only person you compete with is yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, if anybody has competition, just look at it. Because someone asked me the other day, like, how do you keep going forward knowing that somebody's doing the same thing you're doing or doing something very similar and it's like yo I say all the time McDonald's doesn't call Burger King and say stop making burgers and fries we mm. doing that Yeah, they just try to make better burgers and fries yeah. and that's all you could do it's that engagement mm. too yeah. it's just the way you're, and that's branding that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what branding is essentially like how does your brand connect to the people who are buying into it mm-hmm. if they don't connect to it in a way if they don't feel you know, a, 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 you know, some type of connection to it. It's not gonna work, yeah. no matter what what you're doing. Definitely. How do you like com- like how do you compile all this information? Because like I just clicked. I mean, and obviously it's summer in New York mm-hmm. right now. We're in the middle of July, uh, wrapping up July. So like, it, there's like massive Next amounts yeah, this of is things the going on. So time. so like, how does the, all of that data like even get aggregated like to into the app? Um, it's, it's hard, but it's, no, not to say that the process is hard. It's hard to get everything. Mm -hmm. Like I I understood a long time ago that I'm not going to be able to post everything because it's just way too much going on. Mm -hmm. New York is so loopy. Like you could have a huge festival. You can have a tequila fest, which is a huge party and curl fest on the same day and nobody misses out on anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like nobody feels like, uh, no promoter feels like, oh, more people went to that than they went to this. So people weren't, you know, rocking with my event because they went to something else. New York has that. It's enough for everybody. Power. It's enough for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody can enjoy themselves. Um, so it's uh, compiling the list, though. It's just a matter of, well, like I said, when I started off, I, w- I knew every damn body. Yeah. I was managing artists, so I'm yeah. always in the right spots, the right parties, meeting the DJs because I'm trying to get them to play the record. So I'm building relationships with DJs, relationships with promoters, venue owners, security guards. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just meeting everybody and then when people are promoting their stuff, mm-hmm. it's already on my timeline. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. You know, and I follow I follow all these people doing dope events and stuff like that. And if I find come across new people doing stuff, I follow them and I'm just trying to be in tune with who's who, who's mm-hmm. throwing what, what their crowd looks like. Because uh at the end of the day I want to be able to better if they come to me to ask for help promotion, I want to be able to help them the best way I can. And the only way I can do that is if I know, you know, what's going on out here. Yeah. So it's I think the the easy it's it's really composed of me and my team like just going through sc- it. Scrolling our timeline because we're all on the what's the move timeline. Mm-hmm. Scrolling the timeline, taking snapshots, putting it inside the uh, the drive that we all got together and mm-hmm. updating it. Do y'all like vote when y'all picking events? Like no, um, it's most I I give everybody the. Uh, the idea that you're picking events based on would you go to this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Like if the, if you were into this, would you go? Like what what's appealing about it? But I wouldn't post an event that I look at the flyer and say I'm not going to this shit. Yeah, gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, and I try to have a little bit. I tell everybody to be open minded. Like have a little bit of everything because everybody's trying to get something. Like I never we never say that it's like this is a black app. Yeah, we don't promote it as a black app. Mm-hmm. I'm black. I just happen to run it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But we don't promote it as a black app. Because I feel like that you cut yourself off from, you know, yeah. other demographics. All the other demographics. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you if you go, yourself. right. And yeah. now, if you, but if you go to the app, you see who those events are for. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's, it's but something for everybody. It's something for everybody as well. So how do you, or what's the the angle? Because like I noticed, that like when I downloaded it, like it was free. Yeah. So how is as far as like monet- monetization mm-hmm. of what's the move? Like where. Does it start to like pay off, mm-hmm. you know, in, when it comes down to dollars and cents? Um, the dope part about uh, what's the move is it's not just an app; it's an entire brand. Okay. So we can do so many different things mm-hmm. to monetize. Like for one thing, 
we uh, we're starting to throw our own events. Like okay. I've been throwing events for years, but I've never. I'm le- I'm I'm learning as I go along too, and I'm seeing how other people are throwing events and getting to the point where they're now throwing these huge festivals mm-hmm. and making thousands of dollars off of these things. Um, and you know, you I'm starting out, you know, throwing events here and there, trying to piece everything together. I've never thrown events like on that type of level where now I'm trying to go for that. Um, so it's just a matter of uh, throwing events. That's a good way to to generate income. Ad space, of course. Oh, yes. And that's why I'm so driven to um, get the app on everybody's phone. Yeah. Like, I really want 10K downloads by the end of this year. Okay. And I'm confident that we're going to achieve that. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, ten, I feel like 10,000 is like a magic number when it comes to this uh, digital age. Like, yeah. You got 10,000 followers? Cool. We'll pay you to do this. And yes. I think it's kind of weird nowadays because with the influencer culture, it's like, you're paying some. You're paying somebody with a hundred thousand followers to post your flat tummy tea, mm-hmm. but out of the hundred thousand followers, two thousand actually give a shit about it. Yeah, two thousand out of a hundred thousand is terrible. Mm-hmm. It, it, on a on a grand scale, that's yeah. terrible. It, it, mm-hmm. Those aren't good numbers. That's not all. a good. That's not a return of investment. Yeah, you're not getting your, your any brand that invests in that. You're not getting your money back. The dope part about what's the move and the ten when we get our ten thousand is everybody who downloaded this app mm-hmm. got off of social media to do it. Mm-hmm. And if, you know what I'm saying? We're breaking that concentration of getting people off social media to get on our app. To, to use stuff. So that means that, that out of that 10,000, they're actually looking for shit to do. So mm-hmm. partnering with brands uh, like liquor brands or clothing brands or brands that Definitely. are conducive to going out and having mm-hmm. a good time as well as venues, mm-hmm. promote, helping venues promote, it'll all make sense. So I think a lot of our money will come through ads, which most apps make yeah. you know, all of their money off of ads. Yeah. Um, Always do in-app purchases. That's what I'm like. And, in-app purchases, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't think we can... We, I don't. The only other thing I would do in that purchases is uh, start selling tickets. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just something that I'm, I'm trying like to finesse. Some secret that. location <laughs> event, like you yeah. know, or like you know, like, or like <laughs> yeah, something. Like, I mean, just throwing that out there because I'm like that would be the, the thing. I mean, I spent more of my time trying to like prevent Tatum, who's two, from buying things on you know. Thank God, uh-huh. finger, thank God for thumbprints because right. otherwise we she would have had all the Sesame Street. Uh, I believe it. You know, and but kids, kids are using uh, technology at an alarming rate. She's yeah. two. She can. And navigate mm-hmm. YouTube like the best and I I, I, st- love it. I stand by what I said when I said that I put her on YouTube one time I don't know when it was the first time within the last year mm-hmm. and showed her like clicked one video and then she knew how to do fa- it found her way down the rabbit hole to now to the point wow, where like she amazing. could find the videos that she wants you know even algorithms and stuff mm-hmm. so like the things that she's interested in pops up and now so much so even if she goes to the search bar Things that I've typed in for her like once or twice that still are there and like yeah. the, the, we'll the she like site recognition she will click like I know I want to see Spider Man she'll find she clicks Spider Man like as far as the search um, yeah. bar is concerned and then we'll find the video that she wants so like amazing it's it's okay I mean I feel like I'm I'm, I, I'm not saying I you know I went to school for PR and advertising but I'm saying like you get a what's the move for like kids events that's another <laughs> no we had kids events oh okay we even better I was say because um, parents always yeah. are trying to find some shit to do for their kids always yeah yeah, yeah. I know. You know it's um it's difficult one because I don't have kids mm. so I'm not really in the loop like uh, one of my homegirls has a has a daughter and she told me like oh yeah I'm going to this you know kids event da, 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 da. I'm like. Where like where is this happening at? I I would know. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's definitely something I'm looking into, and I'm starting to find more and more kids events. Like I just posted about a, uh, like a cruise. It was like a kids cruise around the city. Mm-hmm. They get face painting, food, mm. uh, games and stuff. There's it's a magic so show. So much that. money. There's so much stuff going on with so kids. Because you like you literally like there's all like we as parents like you like I gotta keep my kid occupied like right. especially during the time of year or if anything especially on weekends and right. things like that because when there's old, no school yeah it's, anytime mm-hmm. there's not school it's like parents are like what am i gonna do right <laughs> like i can't keep them in the house all weekend mm-hmm. but what would you say is the perfect recipe for a perfect like new york city event the perfect recipe um free liquor mm-hmm you need a lot of free liquor. You need free liquor at some point, even if you can't do the whole event. But if you can get people free liquor, they're going to come. 
That's not science. Yes. That's you mean. know what I'm saying? Th- like, those are the best weddings. You, guys you know what I'm saying? Like, like, you don't got open bar, my now, nigga? If you don't have open bar at your wedding, I'm not going. You're going to get divorced. <laughs> I'm that's sorry. Why. I'm, not, I'm not going. I will send y'all, you know, a car with some money in it, but I'm not actually going to go. Divorced in five years or less. Right? Like, I, <laughs> mm, this is a union I can't support. Um, um, I think that, one, yeah, having an open bar, having DJs that are known for you know, doing well. Mm. I think it's very, because a lot of people, that's, that's one, a lot of women I know, that's one of the first things they look at, like who's playing the music? Mm. Like, mm. What are they going to be listening to all night? Um, location, of course. Is it conveniently Is located? Is it conveniently located? Because I'm from the Bronx and going yeah. to events in Brooklyn isn't hard, but coming home from events in Brooklyn is the part that kills me. Gotcha. So, um, you want to put it in a convenient place where everybody can get to something central, centrally located. Um, or just around a lot of good transportation. Yeah. Um, I think your flyer has to be really dope because that's the first thing that people see. And as someone who's looking at flyers all day, I can see the difference between all right, why this event is going to catch people's attention, and why this one. Gonna no keep gonna scrolling. Ca- yeah, they're gonna yeah. keep scrolling. You don't break their um, you don't break their scroll. Yeah. And that's what you want to do on social media. You want somebody to stop, stop, click the link, exactly, mm-hmm. and inquire, swipe like, up. Mm-hmm. You want people to, and you do that with your flyer. But I think ultimately, it's providing a great experience. And I think a lot of people sleep on that. Like anybody can throw a party. Mm-hmm. Literally, all you need is a space, some music, some liquor, like all the things I named. That's all you need, really. Yeah. And uh, just some people. Anybody can throw a party, but it's a matter of, what, all right, once we get to the party, what are we doing? Are we just standing around and we're looking at each other? Or mm. are we, like, for example, Cups and Convos. Yeah. I love Cups and Convos because it's not just a party. Mm-hmm. It's a it's an, it's an entire game night. It's an entire adult game night. There are people doing things all over the place, and it, you're providing experience. Now, when people go back and look through the hashtags, mm-hmm. they're like, oh, shit, I had so much fun at mm-hmm. Cups and Convos. Mm-hmm. I went to Cups and Convos, I drank, I ate, I we played this, they had a basketball thing. Like, if you're able to leave an event, if people are able to leave your event and, like, excitedly tell a story, mm-hmm. or, like, that is, like, that you just created an experience that they won't forget. Definitely. And that's what's going to, one, you know, prove that you threw a great event, but it's going to keep people coming back. People are going to come back and they're going to bring two people with them, mm-hmm. you know, because they can remember a time that they, they had a great time with you. Definitely. That's fair. Yeah. That's very fair to say. I think, and I mean, this is, and it might be personal, but one thing I did like about last night's event compared to like other things I have been to is like, I really hate when like you're in a space or a little venue that you're on top of each other. Mm-hmm. So like there was enough space for yeah. everybody. It was just enough people there where like, Obviously, it looked like there were things going on. It didn't right. look dry or dead, but it wasn't like, oh my God, this is like standing room only. Like, you're like sardines. Like a box, like, right? Yeah. So, like, that is something to me that, like, venues are important. That yeah. really, like, registers because I'm like, I just hate feeling like I'm always, like, bumping into people, like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Mm-hmm. You know, that, like, I'm just like, I'd rather leave. not go. Yeah. Like, I'd rather I'm, not like, be I'm here. like, I'm ready to go. That that speeds up the whole night. Like, right. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm recording secretary for Team Wash. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's already it's like I, I've only got like a small window of time where I'm like in it anyway yeah. it's like let me be standing on top of somebody like this place has three strikes exactly <laughs> they got like, three strikes the music's black I can't get in move around the I'm, drinks a week exactly. I'm out <laughs> like Shark Tank for this reason I'm out exactly. I gotta go it's 10.30 past my bedtime yeah it's Let's over go. yeah my bedtime's 11 so if, if by 11 I'm not having a great time I'm going home exactly <laughs> so on the flip side of things mm-hmm. what and if we didn't already touch on it, what are some things that you know are a recipe for disaster as far as an event is concerned? Um, you don't have to name names, but just like you can give an example. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to name names. You can just give an example. I think um, people not being um, respectful of time. Mm. They're not respectful of the people working the event. They're not respectful of their time. So, I mean, the people coming to the event, their guests, they're not respectful of their time. So mm. people to come and things aren't set up. Ooh, or you, big. or like perfect example, fire festival. You're promoting things that you don't have, <laughs> that don't exist, that don't exist, that you don't have. So now people feel like, all right, I paid my money for this, and I'm not getting what I paid. My for. money's worth. I'm not getting my money's worth. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, having a terrible DJ. Um, yeah, disorganization is definitely big. Disor- yeah, disorganization, and um, I think just not setting 
a good vibe or setting you like as the promoter, the host or whatever, whatever you are, a DJ, whatever, you're supposed to set a certain type of vibe. And you do that by the way you talk about the party, the type of people you invite to the party. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're not going to invite them niggas over there to a party, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. To a nicer party like this, you know? Yeah. So it's just a matter of, you know, I, I like how you use the word recipe because it's a matter of, you know, you're a curator, you're the chef. What are you going to throw into this pot to make it taste great? Yeah. And make it a great event. So it's just it's just a matter of... And also, keep in mind what people want. Like pe- Also, people don't... It's weird. You have to keep in mind what people want and give them what they're asking for. But at the same time, people don't know what they want. So you could give them anything. And then when they get there, they're like, oh... Like, for example, with Gups, Cups and Convo, if they... If they didn't have the jump rope there, mm-hmm. people would just be having a good time without jump rope. Yeah. But now that you give them the option to have jump rope, they're like, oh shit, we could double dutch. And that changes everything. I shit you not. That's exactly what happened. Because like, I, wa- I walked by and I came inside and I was like, is that a jump rope on the ground? And I picked it up and like, it felt like every girl in like the la- like within like 10 feet of me was like, <laughs> bitch, is that a jump rope? Are we, do- and I'm like, are we doing this? And so like, then all of a sudden it was like single rope, double dutch. And like people were, you know, it was going back and forth, Fire. you know, and it was, and it was dope because I'm like, uh, you know, anything like we, us as like millennials, I would say like, we, we hearken back to like nostalgia. Like mm-hmm. that's why all, that's why Disney's getting all our money. Right. That's why, because the nineties was like an amazing fucking era. time to be a kid. Yeah. So you take that back. Like, honestly, the only other thing they could have had was, like, if we, people were playing, like, you know, Red Rover, Red Rover. You know Taki, come playing on those over. Games? Oh, still man, that would everything. So, I'm yeah. like, it just, like, you need kind of space like that. And I have my, my own, like, two cents about that, too. But it's just, like, that's so important about offering an experience. Yeah. I think, um, and which, you know, I guess I would ask you if you could, like, touch on that even a little bit more because... It's New York City. Mm -hmm. So everything is either, I feel like, oversaturated or non-existent. Mm -hmm. Like, so how does one, like, if they make it onto, you know, what's the move or these moves or, like, how do do people stand out? Because it seems like there's always, like, these, like, groups of friends that kind of, like, pop up. And they're like, we got this going on. We got that going on. And it's like, how does, how do they stand out in what could be arguably seen as like a very oversaturated market mm-hmm. of events. Mm-hmm. Um I think with that it's a matter of instead of looking at the friends that are together that are throwing their own events and stuff, instead of looking at them as like a separate thing or something that you're not supposed to be a part of mm-hmm. um network. Mm-hmm. Because it's nothing to you know develop relationships with certain people, Facts. and we're in the we're in the people business. Mm-hmm. So it's like you you have to know people and kind of build rapport with people because that's how you know your network is your net worth. Your your, your brand increases. Your brand doubles in size when you have different people within your network. Now to stand out, I I think I mentioned it earlier. It's like study what everybody else is doing and do what they're not doing mm-hmm. because again people don't know what they don't they don't know what they want mm-hmm. yeah. now if I give like you said now let's say boom you find the jump rope at Cups and Convos and I love using them as an example right mm-hmm. now because it's, it's perfect mm-hmm. you find the jump rope at Cups and Convos now what if somebody found some chalk and y'all got hopscotch mm-hmm. going off and y'all did, y'all know, you know what I'm saying? You got yeah. a whole bunch of other stuff going off. Now it's an even better experience. Mm-hmm. So if somebody, and I super doubt this would happen, if somebody was like, yo, we're going to do a game night too, we're going to have all the shit that they have, and we're going to have hopscotch too. Like, yeah, that's how build. you stand out. Now you're now you're the, the game night with hopscotch. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that, cha- that takes you into a new bracket. That makes people come to you because, all right, you already have everything we... we Wanted and we got used to plus more. Yeah. So it's just a, it's it's a competitive game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's um, is enough room for everybody to wiggle. Mm-hmm. There's more than enough room. It's just a matter of, I think, getting to know everybody within this community, and um, you know, doing what they're not doing essentially, True Make, doing your thing bigger. You know, just making something again, not even in competition, but doing something bigger than what. Has already been done. Mm-hmm. It's like that extra. It's like that secret spice or something like that. Like whatever yeah, yeah. you can add. You know that since we you know doing recipe talk. Right. You know like 
what's what's that secret ingredient that you can add to yours exactly that can make it stand out a little bit more Mm -hmm. or you know and and thinking about like what the people like and what Mm -hmm. the people want and how to do that and i like that you mentioned too like about and making it like a net making sure that you're networking because um it it can at least appear on first glance to be very like separated Mm -hmm. like clickish and stuff like that but it's really important to kind of put yourself out there and push yourself and Mm -hmm. then also like Make Especially if you want to be in in, in 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 the realm. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, and it's hard, you know? You from New York, you're always, at least at least for me, I'm always thinking, like, mm-hmm. what if I say what's up and they right. play me? Or, right, you know right. what I mean? Been there. But, Been there. but once you kind of get into this space, like, when we started podcasting, I'm like, I'm going to have to speak to these people. Absolutely. I'm going to have to send these emails. Yeah. And I'm going to have to have tough skin and say... If they if, if they're they not nice me, right. or if they tell me no, it's not personal. Absolutely, I just have to. I have to be able to not be afraid of no uh, of the no. Yeah, no is no. I think is the, the best thing someone can tell you because I agree. they tell you no, and now it's like okay, now I have to figure out a new way yeah. to get it. Now mm-hmm. I have to now I have to push myself even further, and there's nothing wrong with 100%. that. Hundred percent, and no, it's, it's better to get the no for me. Right, it's better to know what someone is. Like, exactly. I, I'd rather you tell me no, or I'd rather you tell me. I'm not speaking. Cool. Mm-hmm. At least you know. But if you don't you know take that shot, people, right? You'll never know. You never know exactly. Never know. And what you touched on about, um, wow, just now, <laughs> just now, wow. about about being from New York. Shot? No, no, about uh, being one being from New York and then um, doing work with. Uh, I'm trying to remember verbatim what you said, but it's doing work with other people and like. I don't remember what you said 100. percent But have to go back on the tape. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't have to go back on it. But with what. My uh, rebuttal to that was, it's like, you you have to learn to, to build with people on a level above whatever creative space you're in. Mm-hmm. And you have to kind of learn how to connect to people as people mm-hmm. before connecting to them as creatives. Mm-hmm. I mean, that takes a little bit longer because a lot of people have walls up, especially in New York. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are very standoffish. They have walls up. Definitely. Perfect example, when I first met Mouse Jones, mm-hmm. I didn't trust him. Mm-hmm. Like and that's one. He's one of my closest friends now. Mm-hmm. Like, but when I first met him, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Hey, he introduced himself. He already knew who I was. He knew who the people around me was. So I'm kind of like, who is this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, why does he know me? Why does he? I don't get it. Like, what does he want? Yeah. But then you, you know, you get to know people as people, and you're like, yo, like, they're trying to do the same thing I'm trying yeah. to do. They're trying to create something from nothing. That sounds and that's it's funny because that sounds like to, when you said that, that makes me think of TJ because mm-hmm. I feel like because TJ's very aware in like a non abrasive like way of like okay like people who are in the room like mm-hmm. he is the one who like gets guests like you mm-hmm. everyone else like, he's always the one that like like lines those up and like you know and take and shoots the shot and and goes for it and mm-hmm. then like once they kind it's kind of like a you know it's and it's a partnership right it's like mm-hmm. and then once they kind of get in front of us, it's like you know, I I step in as like the the warm handoff. Like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm like you know, get I, I, my goal is like make them comfortable and right, you know, right. and then have, we start having yeah, those conversations. One two points. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great partnership. So you know, it's, listen, 15 years in the making. I hear it. So it, but I think that like it's dope because it's like it's important. Like you, if, if you want to move in the in the rooms with certain people, you got to be knowledgeable about the people in the room. Like you right. can't just come in there and be like, and you are yeah. like, because then somebody else could look at you crazy and be like. The fuck me? Who am who am I? Like you know right, what I mean? Like right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's so it's, many different ways it could be taken. Exactly. But it, I think the important thing is um, us connecting to each other as people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because people do business with people they like. Absolutely. And if you hit it off with someone about a show that y'all used to both watch as y'all was kids, mm-hmm. that wall kind of comes down. And a little bit. Yeah. Now, like oh, I can connect to you on a, such a, a nostalgic level. Yeah. I can connect to you. You watch Dragon Ball Z too? Like, I'm sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that can, it's, easy or, for, it's easy for dudes. So, so my thing is basketball. Like same thing. You bring, guys, up, it's, it's bring, a basketball, you bring a basketball. It kind of like changes exactly. stuff. I've made like some of like my closest friends because we played ball. Like same. we played ball together and we we were rocking on the court. Right. So now the guards is down. Exactly. So you are. So, 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 so I'm glad that you said that because I think people people are afraid to network because they're afraid of the response. But you do mm-hmm. have to. You have to find how you're going to connect with somebody. Right. Like, you can't 
just come out with business because someone probably already did that. Yeah, they doing that to them all the all time, all day long. Mm-hmm. So now, yeah, if you come to me about business now, it's like, do I feel like doing this? Do I have to, like you know what mm-hmm. do I know about you? Is this a trustworthy situation? Right. You know, so once you kind of build a relationship off of different stuff, then it's it can easier. be a little easier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, and it's hard. Don't only be wrong. Yeah, like, it is. It's 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 hard to get out of your shell and, and worry about how someone may perceive you right. or you know, like I'm. I've sent out emails and people have said no, and I'm like, damn, did I word it wrong? You think about what you yeah, did wrong, but, yeah. Yeah. but you know what I mean. I I also appreciate those those L's. Mm-hmm. Like I appreciate the L's so much because it just helps me grow it's a as a person. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. So shout out to you, babe. I uh, appreciate you, killer. Lining them up and I'm knocking them down. Yeah. That's it. Um, so you want to you want to do all the questions? No, I'm go ahead. No, I'm no, sorry. No, I'm just asking. Go ahead. Too. I, I, I just want to know. You you can take the next one. What has been a highlight of doing the like of being an entrepreneur? Mm, that's a good question. Damn, we be trying. Y'all, yeah, y'all are good. Um. One of the highlights I would have to say is um, seeing people enjoy what you create Um, because that's one of the things that as an entrepreneur and as a creative, I'm sure everybody goes through it where you create something and you're sitting with it and you have your thoughts about it and you say to yourself, I wonder if people are going to like this or I wonder if people are going to use this, if they're going to listen, if they're going to like the picture like mm-hmm. it, it, Facts. You, you're always wondering if people are going to accept what it is you created and I'm blessed to say that people are gravitating towards something that I've created and mm. that feels good that means like you basically proving yourself right like yeah I wasn't fucking crazy like <laughs> I knew it I knew people was gonna like this exactly so um it, it's a good feeling when you know I get on Twitter and see people recommending what's the move to their friends or like People on Instagram tagging me in the story like, yo, y'all got to go get this app, do this, do this, because it's like, okay, it's working. Like everything that I, it, it, it's reaffirming, it's reassuring. Mm-hmm. It's confirming everything that I already laid out for myself. Like, all right, it is working. People do like it. It is growing. Everything I plan so far is working. Keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. So I think that is like the highlight of it. When someone, and that's at any level, not, that, not yeah. just with what's the move. Like I remember when I was managing artists and we People didn't really, like y'all said, people don't see the hard work that goes into it. They didn't see the hours we spent in the studio, mm-hmm. the getting the cover of the mixtape, the day that we dropped the mixtape. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't, people don't see that struggle, mm-hmm. but to see after we drop it, people like it, they into it, they sharing it. It's like, that's mm-hmm. a good feeling to know that, you know, you were right. Yeah. You know, you saw the beauty in something and, and, and other people see it too. That's, that's a good a, feeling. That's a, a very well articulated way to 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 put that so <laughs> and I'm, I'm as someone who's big on words mm-hmm. i i tip my hat thank you thank you oh yeah i'm I'm, you know? I'm big on words too so I'm big on articulating um too but on the flip side of things mm-hmm. there's obviously a lot of struggles that come with trying to like push your you know you are your own brand uh-huh. boss everything in between so if you had to kind of also like articulate how the downsides or the, the 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 pitfalls of you know running your own business and being mm-hmm. your own boss like what would some of those things be um i think one of the biggest pitfalls or like one of the biggest things i run into that i could call like you know hard to get over stuff like that is honestly um getting over yourself mm. and it's not in a sense of just thinking you know, getting out your head with the anxiety about like if you're good enough and stuff, but getting over laziness, being dedicated, um, keeping say that your, again, keeping please. Your, no, getting out of laziness, <laughs> being dedicated, keeping your word, uh, doing the work. Mm-hmm. People think that like they see you creating and they see you doing everything, and they see the highlights, but not people don't often see, you know, your losses. They don't mm-hmm. see the L's that you take. Yeah. And a lot of people, if they saw the losses you take, there'd be a lot less people trying to be entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because they'd see it and go, oh, nah, like I'm not built to take that type of loss. I'm not built to. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Those go. setbacks. Then a lot of people aren't built for that. And um, 
you got to get in tune with yourself so that when these L's come, when these, these you know, losses happen, you're, you're mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, prepared to deal with them. Mm-hmm. You got the fortitude. Right. Like, you have to build a foundation and an infrastructure within yourself, not just with, with your creating. And I feel like a lot of, like I said earlier, a lot of people don't figure out with who they are first or what they're really trying to do. Mm-hmm. And then you get to a point where you're trying shit and nothing's working and you're like, why won't it work? And it's like, because you are not that you're not focused, you're not centered. Mm-hmm. You lack for example, um right now I'm going through like a huge transformation with self mm-hmm. where I'm starting I, I read the book The Five AM Club and it got me thinking about how like uh you know, waking up at five AM helps with my the rest of my day. Mm-hmm. And it's not just about waking up and going to the gym. It's about waking up and just you know, getting yourself together using the first hours of your day for you. And what I'm trying to, um, what I'm trying to bring out of that, that transformation, it's hard. Like, I don't want to go to the gym. Mm. I hate going to the gym. <laughs> I hate waking up at like, five o'clock in the morning and going to the gym and all that other stuff. But you, you're not going to get to what you want if you keep doing things the way you've been doing them. Mm-hmm. There, there's a level, there's a new level of growth. There's a new level that you have to ascend to. And the only way you're going to ascend to that new level is if you change up your game plan a little bit. Gotcha. If you change, thank you. If you change up your game plan a little bit, you change up how you move, things will change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, people have to get over, they have to get past themselves first. You have to kind of realize, I have to work a little bit harder. I have to step it up. I have to stop being lazy. I have to be dedicated to not just my work, but every other aspect of my life. And then everything else will come together. But that's the hardest battle with yeah. yourself. One thing I always feel like is a big thing, even if you're not, even if it's not even an entrepreneurship, but just like sometimes being in these rooms with these people mm-hmm. is, and maybe this kind of ties back into what I was trying to touch on in the beginning of the episode, which was like that feeling like that imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't, I don't deserve yeah. to be in this room. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's like, you know, actually, to some extent, you obviously do because you, you're here. You got, you got your foot in the door. Right. And so that imposter syndrome is real, is, is a big thing too, I think, because you we always people always are going to broadcast their wins Mm -hmm. and completely you know keep the the l's to themselves exactly and you know we are you know some people's every breath it hangs on the next you know the likes and the the, Mm -hmm. what's on their timelines and their news feeds and stuff so when you don't see those things when you don't see all the things that the 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 pitfalls and the, the obstacles that people had to kind of run through to get to that point where now they're like, okay, I've gotten to this particular goal point and I'm going to broadcast this. Mm-hmm. They feel like, oh, well, this person's always winning and obviously always doing everything right. And then now I'm in the same space as them. I don't deserve to be here right. because I'm, I am I am consistently fucking up mm-hmm. in some way, shape or form or whatever. And I just got lucky or something like that. So I think that that's very, that's something that's very true and um, an accurate point to touch on because you obviously we we've all obviously done something right to be, end up in the spaces right. with the people that we've been in um because of something we said we did we wrote whatever and it's like so like there's a the essence of like you know what no i deserve to be here too right. you know i mean i had i may only have a little bit to contribute but i have something right like i'm and here then, for a reason yeah i'm here for a reason i think confidence goes a long way that too um and it's hard it's hard yeah. to get confident. It is. You know, um, you know, some people have it automatically. Some people learn it. And some people just never get it. Yeah. But I think as long as you feel confident, like my father has always instilled like to be confident, be your own man, you know, love your last name, mm-hmm. like feel. My name is my name. Yeah. Right. <laughs> have, have self, be you know, so, 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 so with that, it makes it easier that. When I win, when I lose, I'm always gonna be confident. I'm right. not gonna worry about about it because it's it's just me. You know right. what I mean? It's it, it has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm I'm not doing things for other people. I'm always doing things for myself, my mm-hmm. family. So whatever happens, like if Danny's uh, upset or or if Danny's disappointed, then yeah, I may feel type of way. Right. But if someone I don't even know is upset because I did something or said something that doesn't affect me the same way. Yeah. I I think a big part of it is, um, not only having confidence, but also understanding other people on a human level. Like we're all going through these same type of emotions. Mm -hmm. 
you may look at somebody as, oh, like you said, you see their highlights all day. You don't know how much they suffer with anxiety mm-hmm. on the low because they don't promote that. Exactly. Yeah. So it's what you have to understand. I, I tell a lot of people, like, if you need any confirmation, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> I want everybody to understand. Is this camera on me? Yeah. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm t- I'm going th- step by step, day by day. Definitely. I'm not a. I don't know anything about an app. Like yeah. I'm learning. Got you. And a lot of people think that you know they see me doing this and doing that, and they're like, oh, he, you know, everything must be going well for him. Like you know, things are dope. Life is great, mm-hmm. but. I'm still... It's a um, lot of trial and error. It's trial and error for me, too. I'm still going through that same trial and error everybody else is going through. And once you approach those rooms with it in your head that everybody here is human, everybody has their shortcomings, everybody has their flaws, everybody has their strengths. Yeah. You have People focus so much on their flaws and their shortcomings and not so much on their strengths because mm-hmm. it's your strengths that got you in that room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Your, your flaw didn't get you in this room because you wouldn't be here. Yeah. That's your it. flaw would have made it so that you could never reach this, this, uh, this space. Definitely. But you're here because you're a winner. You're here because you're supposed to be here. And um, a lot of people, it's mental. Everything is mental. It but is. As soon as you get through your head that like, you know, none of us know what we're doing. We're all just figuring it out as mm-hmm. we go along. Definitely. You'll realize that, you know, this is just where you are on your path. Some people may be a little bit further on their journey. Here you are on your journey, but yeah. you have to figure it out the same way they did. And like, how can we, and then how do we end up like helping each other, like get to, you know, it from... Having those conversations. That's a tough one. It's like, it's mm-hmm. not, and not to say, not in a, really, not in the sense of like it's using crazy. people, but just like, I, like, everybody has something to offer. So, how can we both make, a, a pour into each other? That's basically what I want to say. So, like, when I said that pour. it was a tough one, I mean, like, if I'm a podcaster and someone else is a podcaster, but that other person sees me as a threat, mm-hmm. then, okay. uh, then it's not going to be like, I'm not going to help them. Right. Like, when I started this podcast, I reached out to one of my frat brothers. He kind of showed me the way. And then I just started learning on my own. Right. And then when like when um, Rock hit me up and was like, you got a podcast, I'm trying to do it. I never once was like, no. Right. This is a lot. This is all the stuff that I know. Here you go. And, you know, anything that you need me to help you with, I'm, I'm going to help you with. Because mm-hmm. for me, if anybody wins, then we all win. Right. Period. You know, Mm -hmm. but I think sometimes people may see it as, well, we're doing the same thing. So you're my, you're my, you're my competition. So Mm -hmm. I can't show you how to do this. Like it's certain shit. Like I wanted to, you know, like do like the visuals Mm -hmm. and I seen rock learns rock taught himself. So I'm like, yo rock, how you do it? Help me. Like, you know what I mean? So it should be like. You know, each one teach one. It should be, but uh, sometimes it's not it's, always like sometimes that. Sometimes it's, it's hard. So sometimes people don't want to help you because right. it's like if I'm helping you, I'm taking away from me, and yeah. that's a terrible mindset to have as a creative because we're all in the, we we're all in this together because mm-hmm. we're all servicing the same type of community. We're yeah. all marketing to the same types of people. So it's like if the person next to you is shining. You shine brighter, you know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. shine brighter too. Yeah. And people feel like you're gonna lose shine if you give give some away or highlight somebody, but support is mad free. And I guess I said it's not hard because mm-hmm. all we have to do is show a little bit more love. Yeah. yeah. That's all that really has to happen. Well, I try to do but, that all the time. And and, and <laughs> the thing about it is some people some people think that way and some people don't. Mm-hmm. And your job as a creative after that is to realize, okay, so who do I feed? Yeah. You feed the love. Mm-hmm. Keep feeding the love. If these people like you, if they love you, if they champion you, you keep you keep feeding them. The people that hate you, the people that don't champion you, the people that low key, you know, they act like they they like everything you do, but they low key don't like. You don't like, feed them. You just mm-hmm. love them from afar. You love you love them from afar. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? What's up? And then keep it moving because that's. Yeah. I think it gets difficult when you start trying to. Uh, give the same type of love to everybody, and that, that it doesn't work like that. Yeah, you start like, to deplete yourself, and then exactly. like, and that's and that's that's not okay either. Like you, I agree. Like you have to, there has to be a level of discernment. Like mm-hmm. you have to, you. But it, it like and like with those people who you realize that pour into you, pour back into them, yeah, yeah. and then the people who you know either ghost or Hollywood or <laughs> don't show or don't support or you know and it's and I mean it, 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 it varies you know mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean it's like a, a cold shoulder or anything like that but it's just like okay so, well I'm gonna still... I'm I'm move a little different yeah. and that's all it is it's like it's just like to me it's always like duly noted yeah and then you you also got to understand some people 
don't know how to support you. I, I said in a, a podcast oh I did gosh. a while ago that support is a lot like a love language. Like you mm-hmm. have to teach somebody how you want to be supported. It's learned. You have to like if you want somebody to post your show, say that. Yeah. How you could help when people say, "Yo, what you need? I need you to post my show." Mm-hmm. I'm I'm direct with you. I'm letting you know exactly what I need. I you ask me for this. And so if it's something that doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't break your back or anything like that. That's fair. There's no reason why you should, you know what I'm saying? Like it can't be done. That's not fair because I know of people who's like, my best friend didn't post my show, but mm-hmm. it's also like, did you ask him? Right. Yeah. I mean, but some people feel like I shouldn't have to ask you because it's, it's right. my... It's, it's your my man. You're supposed to do yeah, it, but, but it's like a lot of people What is he going through? Right. What, they don't know what is he do. doing mm-hmm. during his day that maybe he didn't even see it? Like right. for me, I'm on social media. But I'm really not. On I know what you media. mean. Like, I know what you mean. <laughs> be, being being that we do podcasting, I've been more like I have to be alert. Mm-hmm. But I could literally like not check my phone all day. Right. So yeah, I, I, so, so so I get it. Yeah, no, but that, that that makes a lot of sense. Close mouths don't get fed, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a fact. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit. <laughs> And being that this still at its heart is a relationship podcast, right. now we are going to start asking Taki about how the life that he leads impacts his relationship. Mm. So, sorry ladies, he's off the market. Mm. Um, um, this, like you said earlier, is a people-based industry, right? right? And it doesn't work if you don't know people, but... That can also sometimes open up like an avenue of like mm-hmm. uh, issues if you're in a you right. know committed relationship. So, in your experience, is it difficult to maintain a relationship while being in this industry of like a running your own business mm-hmm. and like entrepreneurship and be specifically like this like events based like always in front of people who are coming out dressed their best, smelling right. good, looking nice, mm-hmm. and like how does that do you find it's difficult to maintain? Um, it's not difficult. It's not difficult if you find somebody that you really want to be with because you get over a lot of the bullshit Mm -hmm. because it's like, all right, whatever we got to do to make it work, like we going to do it. We going to make it work. But, um, it's, it's trying, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like it's, it it is actual work. And I I see what people mean when they say like uh, relationships are work. And I think that's why relationships aren't too, uh, common Oh, not, I'm not gonna say that. I say that's why they like a, a general consensus on social media is that relationships are terrible, and it's, it's my, I think it's mainly because people are afraid to do the work because it's asking you to step out of your comfort zone, be mm-hmm. open with somebody, vulnerable, and it's like a lot of people just aren't ready to do that, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. People move at their own levels, but for me and Leanna, it's like we we when we met, I was already on. I was already a Rolling Stone. I was already doing my thing. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like she. She even says to this day, like she'll look at me like, "Who is this cool guy that mm-hmm. does all these things and knows all these people? Like, who is this guy?" And um, it's just like I said, is when you when you get with someone that you really, really appreciate and that you really, really want to be with. You look at certain situations a different way. You carry yourself a different way. Mm-hmm. Um. We're all human, so shit, you know, shit comes up, shit happens, shit, you know, and you, you know, you try to maneuver through it. Mm-hmm. But I think with um, with us, it's kind of uh, it's a lot easier. I don't know. I think it's a lot easier because she understands it's work for me, mm-hmm. and it's not really like a see. It's not like a secret life. It's mm-hmm. like this is what I do. This is my. You yeah. know, my career. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess, I, you know, asking that because this is a, a an industry and a, a field where, like, it's all about who you know. And people kind of, like, try to align themselves with you. And people, you know, and people want to, from just trying to get into places to just, mm-hmm. you know, to frequent events, to get in for free, to get, pre- you know, preferential treatment, mm-hmm. to... Um, Cloud wars. Yeah. And so, like, you know, that could that could definitely look, you know funny if you're in a relationship depending on how people are trying to like mm-hmm. buddy up and get chummy with you and then too it's also like these are events a lot of times happen at night and so yeah. that means like you're out late and then you know so i i think it's a testament to like you got to make sure that there's a lot of strength in your own relationship right. to know that like this is not going to impede or impact what we you know what we have going on mm-hmm. well um 
it's I think we're we're very independent. Mm. And I think independence while in a relationship is super important. Very like you have to grow individually while together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's it's hard because you think that like for right right now, for example, I said I'm going through like this whole uh transformation myself and one thing that I do is I well she's an early riser too mm-hmm. and usually we're on the phone in the morning or usually we're you know we spend the mornings talking to each other mm-hmm. but now that I have a new morning routine it's like I'm really like I, I can't really talk to you right now I can of course say good morning and mm-hmm. I love you and all that good mm-hmm. stuff but it's like I'm doing something right now yeah and that um from I can imagine looking at your partner going through this transformation and going through this growth without you mm-hmm. looks like you trying to grow up on me and get exactly. out of here. Like, exactly. it looks crazy. You trying to move up and you out. You trying to move up, like, you trying to, you know, move up on me. And it's like, no, I'm trying to move up for us. Like, yeah. I'm trying to progress to be a better person for not Both just you. Yeah, not just you, but for me as well. Yeah. So that is just something that's, in, you know... You have to be understanding in a relationship mm-hmm. where your your significant other is an entrepreneur is always out and about. Was mm-hmm. she always understanding? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was always pretty understanding. Like, there's always there's always those moments. Okay. No, that's fair. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. There's always those moments. But I ask like, because Danny's the Danny's the always there. Okay. Like whatever I want to do, Danny. Hmm. I'm typically the one that it, that that if there's change, I'm asking questions. I'm uh-huh. I'm learning to Feeling be better. Feeling a type of way. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm human. Are you I'm, right? I'm I'm, I'm 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 gonna speak it out. I I see things pretty much like black and white. Mm-hmm. So if, if there's a change happening, but then you do something different, right. like you know, so like for me and Danny, if Danny would be like, she's tired. Cool. Right. I see you working. I see you busting your ass, but then. Her friends is like, let's go to happy hour, and then you go. To me, it's just like you just said you were tired, bro. Yeah. So, 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 so you should be sleeping. Right. But I've as I've gotten older, I've kind of learned that like she doesn't do that to me. She lets me be me. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I really can't do that to right, her. Right, right, right. Exactly. You Same. know. Same, because I'm always out. So like when she goes, when she does go out with her friends, it's kind of like. I mean, I don't, I'm not really bothered by that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Again, we're both super independent. So yeah. it's kind of like, all right, just hit me when you get home. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. hey, have fun. Be safe. Hit me when you get home. Do you need money? Are you okay? Like, <laughs> yeah. who's driving? Stuff like that. But yeah. then after that, it's like... Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it takes time. Like, you, it you know, and, and yeah. it's like, to TJ's point, for us, it's always, like, if he's like, oh, I'm going, like, you know, and and he'll, like, tell me, like, day of, he'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to hang out with Eric and Hector. And I'm like... I, okay, well, I mean, mm. cool, have fun. Like, I know, I like, I know you need that time with you guys, um, and so sometimes it's like you know making sure that that feeling, like that same sentiment, is like reciprocated. Mm-hmm. When I'm like, oh, Megan invited me to happy hour. Like, I'm I'm trying to go. Yeah, I'm always tired, but I also like I know I need time to like to unwind 100%. and spend space and stuff like that. And it's just and um and what you know I I don't need or what sometimes you don't need is like a million and one like questions about like oh well you just said you were tired and blah 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 so like that's and that's you know it takes time and it takes growth but it's and it's but it's important that you that it's recognized that you can do better in, in the right. future because otherwise it becomes a thing like you know we got to keep the same energy right mm-hmm. you know and even though we are different people we're if, independence yeah you have we have to you i think that's absolutely right like you have to have the independence and I kind of always think about like what I think I think Will Smith said it about like you know like you can't expect your partner to make you happy you right. have to like you have to be happy, on, have your to be happy on your own and right. then it's just kind of like you celebrate each other's happiness exactly. you know yeah. um so what what do you do because of with what's the move and everything else like that what do you do to make sure that um it's Leanna yeah yeah what do you do to make sure that Leanna doesn't feel neglected or like like, how do you carve out mm-hmm. that time? Because being an entrepreneur, like, it's kind of like a 24-hour job in right. a lot of ways. So, like, how do you make sure that there's time for her? Um, I'm super inclusive. Like, mm-hmm. I like to include her on stuff. Like, let's say for I'm about to drop in, I'm about to release a event flyer for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And when I first got it from the designer, she was the first person I sent it to. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Like, what, what are your thoughts on it? Because... Because she she's a therapist, so she's mm-hmm. removed from this world. Yeah. So to her, it's like 
you know, yeah. I'm going to tell you what I honestly think. I'm yeah. not going to. She's like fresh eyes. Right. It's fresh eyes all the time for everything that I do. So I like going to her like, what do you think about this? And she's super honest. So That's dope. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. she's going to tell me what she thinks about it. And then I, I, I kind of look at her as like, all right, well, she has a consumer mindset. Like she's, you know what I'm saying? She's Target creative. audience. She's, cra- she's creative as hell. Right. Mm-hmm. So she can always tell me, you know, what's what or how I should go with something. And then I'm also like, I remember Nipsey said it a while ago where he like, he brings, he brought Lauren uh, London with him everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like when he went to a radio show, she was there. When mm-hmm. he went to an award show, a party, anything, she was there. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm learning to do that because, because I'm so independent. To me, it's kind of like, if I'm going to do this and it's a work thing, I'm going there to solely focus on work. I don't mm-hmm. want to have to be working but in the corner of my eye checking on you making sure you're okay and Mm -hmm. you're having a good time and all that stuff too i kind of want to be focused on what i'm doing right here in this moment Mm -hmm. um but i'm learning to be a lot more uh inclusive and inviting with that like when i go when i do go to podcasts like a lot of i went on like a podcast run when i first dropped the app and she came with me to a lot of those yeah uh if i'm on a panel or something she i want to make sure that she's there like just you know being inclusive. Definitely. Do you try to make a point to like also the carve out time like away from work to Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz um, I, I that's think important. That, yeah. And I think that though came when I started this whole journey of um with growth and I'm learning how to be present mm-hmm. in the uh the moment and not just with my relationship but with every aspect of life like when I'm at work, I don't I shouldn't be on my phone. Mm. You know what I mean? I shouldn't be on my phone not because it's a rule at work, but mm. because I should be here in this moment. Not just for the kids that I work with, but for myself. Mm-hmm. True. My focus needs to be there. And you, I want to, you take that same mindset and you apply it to your relationship. Mm-hmm. So now when we, you know, we're spending a lot more time together now where it's like our phones are down, our phones are away, mm-hmm. and we're just here. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes up here is what we're talking about, what we're dealing with, what we're into. Mm-hmm. So that's... Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't do that. It's, it's hard though because... um. It's hard individually to be present with what you're doing and yeah. be present with yourself. So you can imagine being with somebody, it's hard trying to, to do be this, Trying to do it like simultaneously. Exactly. And TJ's hard. like looking at me because he, you know, he's like, oh, you're always on your phone, you're always on your phone. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like I'm someone who like in education, like so outside of like texting like my team or my principal when stuff is going on. I'm not like on my phone like that. So sometimes I'm like playing catch up at the end of the day mm. where I'm like, it's, and it's like decompressing, right? right it's like, right. I'm going to do something mindless because, you know, my mind's been going. My mind's been going. Like, I, you know, teachers and brain surgeons probably make the most like minute, second to second decisions like yeah. in, a, in a, during their work day. And yeah, that's, so now it's like, I need some mindlessness. Like, right. I, you know, and so, but then it also conflicts with like, now this is one, my time when I'm home with him. Mm-hmm. So, but I think it's important though. I think you, you hit on something with like that. You have to be mindful of like when you're in that space with each other and like kind of have that intent mm-hmm. behind that. Like we're going to spend time, which mm-hmm. is one of the reasons why like this, this, this show is so therapeutic or like kind of um, purposeful for us because this is a time where like he and I outside of like, if we're just referencing something outside right. that we're not like engaged in our phones, we're engaging with each other. Right. So Yes, yes, my dear. Shut up. I'm done with you. you know. Um so with um actually, yeah, with the and seems like obviously it's not necessarily your story, but you also rub elbows with people who are in the same field as you, same positions as you. Mm-hmm. Have you what are some of the pitfalls or obstacles that you have like observed i would say as far as like being that this world and then being in a relationship like where do people fuck up for lack of a better term um i think people fuck up when they don't have a sense of self Mm -hmm. of course and i speak a lot about that because i think that's the key to everything that we do Mm -hmm. um people don't have a sense of self and have a sense of uh the I know everybody's heard the phrase uh, what's for you is for you mm-hmm. certain things are not for you and a lot of people think especially a lot of men well mm-hmm. no I can't even just say men but everybody feels like they're missing out on something mm, and FOMO. yeah everybody feels like they're missing out on something like they're in a relationship and there's like all these people here these beautiful people outside doing this and doing that and it's like I want to be a part of the fun too but it's like you can be a part of the fun mm-hmm. without being without being you know unfaithful you know yeah Yeah, like you can be part of the fun without being an ass like yeah just have a good time i think i think for that though you have to have the right partner 
That too. I, th- I think you have to have the right person that knows you, allows you to be you, mm-hmm. and then it becomes a little bit easier. Right. I mean, I think you also have to have references. Like for me, I had an older brother, mm-hmm. and I seen the shit that he went through. I had an older cousin. I see the shit he went through. I didn't want to have to go through that. Right. So when I found something and it was good, it was, it's, that's when the 80-20 rule kind of comes in. It's yeah. like... This shit is perfect right here. Mm-hmm. So am I going to fuck this up? For the 20%? For that 20%? Right. You know what I mean? She may not love me the way Danny loves me. Right. She may not take care Facts. of me or hold me down the way Danny does. Right. So is Facts. it really worth worth it? Like, you know, they always joke like nobody would, nobody else would, would be with me because I'm nobody a Nobody else will put up with you. <laughs> so, you know, but Danny's really like my rider. Yeah. Like, I know... She has my back. I right. know that the love is genuine. I know she wants me to have fun. I don't have to. I don't have to censor myself. Like I can truly be who I want. Who you want to the be. same person I was when she met me. The same person I am today. That's amazing. I'm, I mean, I matured, but yeah. I'm still the same person. Right. She's never been like, no, you can't hang out with this person. No, you can't do this. No, you can't go to the strip club. No, you can't go to a boys' trip. Right. Like you know what I mean. So it's easier because there is no restrictions. Like I'm. I feel at home. Yeah. So I think that that also helps. But I do agree with you. I mean, that's rare though. Yeah. It's a lot. Hundred percent. It's so rare, and you think you think it's common sense. Yeah. But it's rare that people are really, you know, just comfortable with with someone else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. But again, I think that goes to not being comfortable with yourself. So how can you get comfortable with someone else? If you're True. Not comfortable. Yeah. yeah. It's just you know it's it's always a good vibe, and I think a lot of people knock relationships. Or knock long term relationships because again they're afraid to do the work and people are afraid to be vulnerable in front yeah. of somebody. Mm-hmm. We always say relationships, it's not a job, but it's work. Yeah. You gotta take the work. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like once you get like married and stuff like that, like there's no more like we're breaking up. Right. It's like what there's no exactly. more where are we going? Like, exactly. There's no more like get out the house. Like we live together. Or right. or, or, or it don't have to be marriage. Once you live with somebody, once some like once y'all live together, you once can't y'all be names like names on things together. Like it's yeah. like when you, you start to like, them get out. You know what I mean? Like so, you, you gotta really to think about it. Yeah. You gotta really think about that. And you, 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 and then like for us, so we have a daughter. I can't do. I can't be like I'm leaving her because then I'll be leaving my daughter. You yeah. know, like the work continues. Like mm-hmm. I, I always say that too. Like you want to test a relationship, have a child. Mm-hmm. Have a child because it's no longer just you and that person. It's you, that person, and, and that child. Yeah. And now you know, like Danny had to be like Danny became a super mom. Mm-hmm. So her attention is to our daughter, right. and I can see how a husband or a significant other can be like feel some type of way because it's like I'm not the focal point anymore. Right, right, right. But the mature part of me is also like. Our daughter got to live. Our child got to live. So do what you got to do. To become this person. Yeah. In order for our daughter to do what you got to do. Yeah. Let me know how, how I can help you and let's continue building. It's a partnership. Yeah. yeah. It's a partnership. And it's like with, with that comes understanding and learning and, and understanding of your dynamic with this person. 100%. Yeah. Understanding how y'all work together. Like something as simple as uh, Leanna leaves her ID and her card every time she changes her bag. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it's something as simple as me before we're leaving. Do you have your shit? Mm-hmm. Like, you mm-hmm. have your stuff. Okay. Oh no, I don't have it. Thank you. And it's like yeah, that's yeah, emotional yeah, yeah. labor. That's what I talk about with like emotional labor. Like it's the it's the remembering. It's the it's the little things. Because like I talked to him about like how sometimes it seems like it may not seem like on mm-hmm. the surface that like oh this person is not doing a lot of like like visible th- tasks at yeah. hand, which is why it's like they sometimes are so like mentally spent Mm -hmm. but i'm like emotionally but not to say like that's like a a a bad thing but like Mm -hmm. people do emotional labor with their partners because it's like i know she's always gonna forget her her id Mm -hmm. and like i know he always leaves his wallet in his last pair of pants that he Mm -hmm. had on and his keys and stuff like that or like if he's if he's taking tatum to swim class like i'm gonna make sure that like all of her stuff is laid out for her right. but, and in the bag or in the bag because that way otherwise I know he's gonna call me at five forty five, like <laughs> where, yeah. where's her swimsuit, where's her pull up, where's her this, where's her that? And you I'm know like me so well. I, exactly. It's, it's, te- a, it's teamwork. It's, 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 it's that thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just you making sure that it's it's balanced. Right. Because it's not one person doing the 
the anticipating of the other person all the time. But right. then, like, TJ knows that, like, I... I mean, so, like, my birthday was a couple weeks ago, right? Okay. And so, I'm one who, like, I don't shop, period. Mm-hmm. Like, he shops. <laughs> TJ keeps TJ keeps me fly. I can give mm-hmm. him that. Like, I... like. The, it's yes, it's on record. I didn't say that but you, but you also have it on record that like I, like I can go to happy hour without, and I say I'm tired. And you're not gonna give me no hard time. So yeah, we I'm, both got I, it on wax. But <laughs> so I own my stuff. I own my stuff too. I was like, so you know, he knows that like I'm never going to like think to like buy myself nice things or like like not not like I don't like I'm a bum or anything like that. But just mm-hmm. the things that like don't come to mind for me right. to like spend on myself when people, most people be like it's my birthday. I'm about to get shoes. I'm about yeah, to get yeah, this. Yeah. He knows that like it's not going, it's not on my my radar. Right. But I do like those things. I do appreciate those things. I do wear those things. So that's when he'll be like, "Oh, here are some new sneakers or yeah. whatever." And so then, and not until not until I'm at cups and combos when Rock says something to me about my sneakers, and I'm I had to turn him. I was like, "Are these cool sneakers?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, everything, are these... everything I do is cool." <laughs> so so, but like it's <laughs> but it's it's that appreciation. It's that it's that anticipation yeah. that like. I know this person. Yeah, I know, I know this... how to. I know how to help them, or do, or help them complete a task so that it's easier for them. Like yeah. as soon as you mention like putting the bag together for Tatum so that y'all, so that he can take her to swimming, it's like yeah, you made his task that much it's easier. Easy. And that's the thing. And like that comes back to even like love languages and like my my number one is acts of service. Like anything mm-hmm. that you do to make to lighten my load automatically like you I are right. you are number one in my book and for him it's um what's your number one again it's um touch, touch right so it's like from just like uh you know hey like a, you know a shoulder mm-hmm. rub or you know something like that to like it doesn't always have to be like super sexual or anything right. like that but just like the uh, the affection which is not my like natural go-to like mm-hmm. i'm very much like you know th- three feet in every direction kind of mm-hmm. like you know space and stuff like that but it's it's a knowing and anticipating that, but also like, but on the flip side, sometimes you gotta vocalize too. Right. You know, you can't people can't be mind readers, but in being with somebody for an extended period of time, you start to understand how they think. And how, how they yeah, mean, yeah, and then you just kind of meet them some places to help, mm-hmm. you know, help them out with from IDs to sneakers right. to you know, uh, swim class. Listen, relationships can be dope, so. They can be very. Yeah, they, they, I mean, that's how it was intended to be. Yeah. It was intended yeah. to be really yeah. dope. Yeah. But it's just. I think. I think we have to continue working on you know being transparent mm-hmm. as, as just as people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, tell tell the people that you're with what you want, what you like, and what you don't want. Yeah, what you don't like and, yeah. and compromise. You yeah. know, you it. You may want to travel every month, and they may not want to travel every month. So y'all decide to do it. Um, you know, bi monthly right. or, or whatever, but. We have to have the conversation so that way you don't have to sneak around. That way you exactly. don't have to do other shit or have or entertain somebody else mm-hmm. because you never told your partner this is what I wanted and right. I never had that conversation. So that's that's a hard that's a hard conversation to have. And I think especially with men, like telling your partner just anything. Mm-hmm. Like again, like how I express it, it's hard for people to express how they want to be loved or yeah. the things that they want. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it goes unsaid. Especially but like you for said, men. Especially for men. And you it, know, we're taught not to say anything. Exactly. We're taught to keep everything exactly. in. Exactly. And, and you know, you be a man and and as a man you don't cry. You don't mm-hmm. you don't you're not emotional. You don't complain about stuff. So you now know? we're at a point where we need those, you know, we yeah. need to be able to do those things we don't know how. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's it's just very important to be communicative in on both sides, mm-hmm. period. And you know, regardless of line of work, regardless of, you know, past relationship experiences, like you got to communicate in order to like make it work. And right. I think that that's something that I, I know for damn sure TJ is good at because <laughs> TJ steady communicating to me how he feels about whatever it is. You gotta be able to communicate. Yeah. Absolutely. So like I I'm the one that has to sometimes work on like speaking my piece. If it don't work, you know not saying that I don't expect me and Danny not to work, but I don't want it to ever be like it didn't work and I didn't give my hundred percent. Right. Like if it doesn't work, I know for a fact that I gave it my all. I, I told you everything. There was no secrets. Mm-hmm. So I can feel comfortable. Just personally. But yeah. Well Thank you, I suppose. Whatever. For being so open and honest. <laughs> nah. um, but we've reached our last question. <laughs> okay. So, and it's, you know, keeping it light. 
Do you think that true love can be found at a What's the Move event in New York City? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, it's a good... I've, I've noticed that it's a good mix of people mm-hmm. that want to go to these type of events. And they're people who... They're seeking joy. Like, they're seeking joy. They're seeking mm-hmm. a fun time, a good time. Mm-hmm. And everything that comes with that. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you go out expecting a good time and then you meet somebody dope and then next thing you know, y'all talking every day and then every week and then, you know what I mean? And then you build something from there. I think what a lot of people, I think one big reason why a lot of people aren't in too many relationships or like frequently dating is because they don't meet a lot of people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they... Social media has our generation fucked up, fucked up as t- detached, as so detached for in terms of dating. Like, you can like someone or be like involved with someone in less than a week because of the shit that you've seen on their social media, mm-hmm. and you take away the aspect of being personable and talking to people and really getting to know them and seeing them in person, and it, it messes everything up when you take that when you take that aspect away. Mm-hmm. So with these, I think that if you go to events that you find on what's the move. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be social. You're mm-hmm. gonna meet people who are social. You're gonna meet a diverse group of, of, of people. You're gonna always mix and mingle the right way, and you'll know you're gonna get. You're going to a good vibe. You're going to a good space, and you never know what happens after that. <laughs> put, you, put yourself in position to win. Put yourself in position exactly. to get you somebody. Be open, right, talk right. to people, play some double dutch or a little bit of Jenga yeah. or something. Or a happy hour. You know. So, yeah, What's something the simple. moves going to give you what you need? Exactly. Everything you exactly. need. Exactly. It's just, you, you can find a concert. And you'll find people who have similar interests to you. Exactly. We have book clubs on there. You'll, if you love reading and talking about books, you'll go there. You might meet, a, meet somebody who loves books and re- talking about them. Exactly. I think, you know, it, it could be, it's like a pseudo dating app too. That's just like, you know, you could people find, mm-hmm. they, could, they could find love on what's the move. You and really then, can. and then, you know, you can um, sponsor their wedding. And then that's, <laughs> that's, that's, where, that's, that's where you get lit. Right. That's the, if that's, we playing a, if we start playing a wedding, <laughs> that's the big bucks. That's, exactly. Well, yeah. I start playing a wedding. Just make sure it's open bar. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, 100%. Otherwise, otherwise, if, it's, 100%. if it's not open bar, then you're going to get divorced in five years or less. Yeah, nobody's gonna um, believe in the union. Exactly. If it's not up exactly. Oh wait, you know we forgot to. We can end on our other uh, question that we ask all our guests now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what is your take on a person who wears <laughs> black Air Force Ones, lows or mids? Yeah. Go. Anybody who wears black Air Force Ones <laughs> is terrorist, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. And they should be they should be institutionalized or heavily monitored. This is empirical some, data, y'all. This is we're gathering um, evidence. I, it, and I only say that not to judge you for buying the shoe or wearing the shoe, but it's like I've only seen people who wear black Air Force Ones do bad things. Bad things. They're either outside, mad ashy, like about to fight, uh, carrying on. It's like, and nothing good comes from it. I've never seen anybody like lead a positive life with Black Air Force Ones. It continues. It, 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 listen, you this <laughs> ban Black Air Force Ones. We, we have we have not heard. We've not had one guest on this show when we asked them that question say anything positive. See what I'm saying? And so I it's mean, a bad omen. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, you know. Thank you for that because you're just adding to our evidence. We're building a a, a case against. Yeah, we're about to send Nike this. Exactly. Listen, you know the band is. Exactly. They're gonna have to go on some type of like a uh, uh, watch watch list. Like if, we, if you if you purchase these, we have the right to monitor you for the next three months for criminal activity. Yeah. Um, so first off, thank you so much. This has nah, been a you. wonderful conversation. We hope you had a good time I on did. here with us. I definitely did. Great. I wish I could have brought Leanna with you because this would have been this would have been a whole nother show. We're gonna have to we have to bring her back. Yeah, oh, we can do yeah, listen, listen we, if y'all want to do a part two with her, I would no, love we that. Definitely would, more she would than, love that. More than welcome. Please ha- let her know we are right, down. We can make that um fo- um Taki, just let everybody know where they can find what's the moon, where they can find you. Um, and we'll also put it on um, inside the show notes so okay, that way they have it. Absolutely. Um, 
Thank y'all for having me. I, <laughs> this was a really, really good conversation. I can't actually wait to go and talk to her about it. Great. Um, you can find me at uh, Taki Bond uh, on Instagram and Twitter, T-A-Q-E-E-B-O-N-D. Uh, and you can find everything What's the Move at What's the Move NYC on Twitter and Instagram, or you go to What's the Move And of course, download the What's the Move NYC app available in the App Store and on Google Play. Um, and just keep moving. Keep moving. Sounds good. Folks, uh, this has been another great episode. We got a lot of gems from Taki. I'm so excited to like refer people to the app so they can stop asking me questions because <laughs> I don't know shit about shit. What, what's going on in New York because I am old and washed. Super washed. Thank I'm you. washed too. <laughs> so it's okay. The it's shit. Washed. Okay. Um, and um, we just really, really appreciate having you on again. This has uh, been a great you. conversation. Um as always, you know this has been another episode of Lovers Quarrel. You know that you can find us on Instagram at Lovers Quarrel Show, on Twitter at Lovers Quarrel Seven. Of course, if you have questions, concerns, comments, letters, anything in between, email us at Lovers Quarrel Show at gmail dot com. Um, and yeah, so this episode will drop. There might there'll be another little bi weekly hiatus. Um, Possibly. Pop. Like, listen, listen, y'all. I'm fighting with her. Likely, I'm, I'm trying to keep it normal. She wanna, you know, try to change. So, but I have, show. So, you but got this, it. This episode. I'm, listen, I, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you what it is. I'm letting I'm you. I'm letting you run the point. I am, and I'm setting expectations. And then by the end of August, no later than the end of August, we will be back to our weekly schedule. If there's another episode between, it'll be a pleasant surprise. Listen, if y'all send the hate mail, just make sure y'all direct it to me. <laughs> direct it to Danny. That's fine. You gonna throw me under the bus like that? All right. I'm only the mother of your daughter, but that's okay. You're only the mother? I'm just, I'm saying. You're only the mother of my daughter? Yeah. No. I Am I not Tatum's mother? No, you are, but I'm the, I'm that don't old. sound right. What? I'll explain it to you later, baby. It's okay. <laughs> You're only the mother? Y'all, this, oh, has yeah, been yeah, another epi- <laughs> this has been another episode of Lover's Quarrel. And I, am, as always, am your girl, Danny. And I'm your guy, TJ. And you know that we fuss. We fight. But, but we, we love. love. Bye. Bye. God, teach, and you teach me things? Okay. Yeah. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.